I grew up in a family that was Christian for three generations. When I was a child, we went to church as a family to hear sermons and worship God. As an adult, I was appointed by the church to do various types of work for the ministry. I have looked to the Lord throughout my decades-long journey of faith in Him. In the spring of 2013, sometime in the month of May, my church hosted a branch meeting of the World Council of Churches. Creating an ecumenical movement and religious pluralism are the goals of the Council. The World Council of Churches brings together various sects of Christianity and preaches the following. God is love, and all Christians who believe in God can be saved. Even those of other faiths, regardless of who or what they worship, can be saved. But beneath the rhetoric, when all the words are stripped away, their final goal is the unification of all faiths. Hi there. Hello. Is your mom at home? Yeah, she's here. Come on in. Sister, how are you? Oh, hi. I'm fine. Have a seat. Good to see you. Sister, there was an event at the church yesterday. Why didn't you go? Uh, I didn't want to go. Why not? <sighs> I think that the arguments the WCC is making are sort of a betrayal of the Bible. And it's not at all in accord with the Lord's will. These are your ideas? <sighs> Here's 2 Corinthians. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believes with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Why come out from among them, and be you separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Amen. The Lord Jesus is the only Savior and the only one true God. Those who worship idols, evil spirits, and false gods, they don't even believe in the Lord Jesus. How can anyone say they'll be saved? A Christian church wants to be unified with worshipers of idols and false gods? When you put it that way, it makes sense. Over time, I started realizing that my church had no leadership and no work of the Lord. We were aimless. Amen. At Sunday worship, the elders and senior deacons who led us in prayer did so by simply reciting from scripts that were prepared before. What was the point? Prayer like that felt false to me. Real prayer should be speaking to the Lord from your heart. Even if it's just a line or two, it should come from the heart. Because the Lord Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The prayers that they recited from the prepared scripts weren't true prayers at all, and such prayers do not please the Lord. And when the church chose its deacons, they didn't, as the scripture teaches, choose those of integrity, temperance, loyalty, or those who do not love money. They chose those who made the most offerings and were the most enthusiastic as deacons. 
I watched the church leaders do things that go against the Lord's teachings and lead believers according to their own doctrines. I just couldn't see the Lord's leadership in that church. I couldn't feel the Holy Spirit's work. The church gave me nothing spiritually. Disappointed, I decided that I just couldn't be involved with a church like that anymore. It was weighing on my soul. In the end, I decided it was best to leave. But after I left the church, I realized that my entire life had revolved around the church, and now I was rootless. I didn't know what to do or where to go. My heart felt heavy. To find a church that truly had the Holy Spirit's work and to find a new life supply. I started reading all kinds of spiritual books and listening online to sermons from famous pastors from Korea and around the world. But I couldn't find what I was looking for. I spent over three months searching. And I contacted a female preacher from my original church that I had stayed in touch with. She had started her own church but over time, the flock abandoned her, and she was the only one left. While I listened to sermons on the internet, we met up and I fellowshiped with her. But I realized that the sermons of the pastors who graduated from seminaries and the famous religious leaders couldn't supply me with any sense of enjoyment in life. So, I continued on with my search. Three months later, I made contact with a church that felt more in accord with the teachings of the Bible. I went every Sunday and started taking part in that church's activities. I even began working as that church's accountant. But it wasn't long before I realized that all the prayers at the beginning and end of worship were spoken in tongues. At this church, speaking in tongues was regarded as the only evidence of the work of the Holy Spirit and of salvation. But that's not what I believe. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, it is my understanding of the scripture that true faith is to understand the Lord's words and demonstrate the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit in our life. And this is proof of receiving the work of the Holy Spirit. And during their sermons, the pastors were only repeating themselves over and over again. There were no new ideas, no new light. Most of the believers looked blank or dozed off during the boring, repetitive sermons. Church meetings were merely going through the motions. Most people didn't give much thought to what they were doing and were in a negative, sunken state. I couldn't see the joy that should be present in the worship of the Lord. Faced with such uninspired worship, I thought to myself, would the Lord be pleased to see them going through the motions? Would the Lord accept this? Would the Lord be with us?
and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and know not that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I was reminded of this passage from the book of Revelation. Wasn't the situation in this church the condition of the church of the Laodiceans? Such a church couldn't satisfy my spiritual needs. I felt empty, helpless, and completely dark. I'd realized that all the churches I'd seen were exactly the same. They had a service that followed the rules and external guidelines stipulated by a few individuals. This was not a service led by the work of the Holy Spirit. I yearned for the Lord's return. I wanted Him to come shepherd us. I wanted Him to come guide us once again. My heart ached and I could feel it cry out, Lord, when will you come back? I became more and more anxious. Each time I had the chance, I searched on the internet for terms like the voice of God, the footsteps of God, and other terms related to God's return. I yearned to find the returned Lord and to find a church that could supply me with life. On January 27, 2016, I looked for news of the Lord's return online. I clicked on a link to a video, and when I opened it, I was surprised to hear words that lifted my spirits and stirred my heart. My kingdom is coming into shape above the whole universe, and my throne holds sway in the hearts of hundreds of millions of people. With the angel's assistance, my great accomplishment will soon be brought to fruition. All my sons and my people await my return with bated breath, longing for me to reunite with them, never to be separated again. How could the multitudinous populace of my kingdom not race toward one another in joyful celebration because of my being together with them? Can this be a reunion for which no price need be paid? I am honorable in all men's eyes. I am proclaimed in the words of all. When I return, I will conquer all enemy forces even more. I didn't entirely understand, but I heard the words. My kingdom is coming into shape above the whole universe 
and my throne holds sway in the hearts of hundreds of millions of people. I will conquer all enemy forces even more. The words had the authority and the power of God. Those weren't words that could be spoken by a man. It was hard not to get too excited. I continued on, listening carefully. The time has come. I will put my work in motion. I will reign as king among men. I am on the point of return, and I am about to depart. This is what everyone is hoping for. It is what they wish. I shall let the whole of humanity see the arrival of my day, and let them welcome the coming of my day with joy. I was shocked, to say the least, after hearing these words. Who was saying this? Where did they come from? I immediately picked up my phone and called two Christian bookstores to ask whether they sold this book. Hello. Yes, I have a question. Okay. Do you sell the book, The Scroll Opened by the Lamb? Sure, just a moment. I'm so sorry, but it looks like we don't carry that book. Oh, hello. Does your bookstore sell the book, The Scroll Opened by the Lamb? Hold on a second. I'm very sorry, ma'am. We don't keep that book in stock. All right. Do you know where I can buy it? It's important. I'm really sorry. Maybe you can try another bookstore. We don't have it. <sighs> I saw the contact details in the video and decided to contact the Church of Almighty God. When you saw the reading video of Almighty God's Word, how did you feel? Well, I remember. My kingdom is coming into shape above the whole universe, and my throne holds sway in the hearts of hundreds of millions of people. With the angel's assistance, my great accomplishment will soon be brought to fruition. And another part. The time has come. I will put my work in motion. I will reign as king among men. I am on the point of return, and I am about to depart. This is what everyone is hoping for. It is what they wish. I shall let the whole of humanity see the arrival of my day, and let them welcome the coming of my day with joy. When I heard those words recited, I felt like they carried Authority. They were words that can't be spoken by men. They seemed like... They really were the words said by God. That's why, no matter what, I have to find and read the scroll opened by the Lamb. I want to know if the Lord Jesus has returned. If He's appeared and spoken, I need to know. Well, it's true. The Lord Jesus has appeared and spoken. Yes. And He has returned to us as the incarnate Almighty God. It's very exciting. Almighty God has come to express the whole truth of saving people. He works to purify and save mankind. Yes. He does the work of judgment, starting with the house of God in the last days. Almighty God begins the Age of Kingdom and concludes the Age of Grace. He reveals the mysteries of God's 6,000-year management plan of how He saves man, and He reveals all the mysteries of the Bible. Here, sister, the scroll opened by the Lamb is the word expressed personally by God in the last days. You will enjoy reading it. It is the water of life granted to us by God and the only way to eternal life. All we need to do is follow the footsteps of the Lamb. Then. When we fully grasp the words expressed by God, 
we can receive the light He supplies us with. By feeding and watering our thirsty spirits, life can finally grow within us. Are you really saying that the Lord has returned? <gasps> Almighty God, is the Lord Jesus that I've been waiting for all these years? Are you certain? Yes. Yes. <gasps> How can you be so sure that the Lord Jesus has truly returned? Sister, remember what the Lord Jesus prophesied. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Amen. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. This is what we know. So according to the Lord Jesus' prophecy, the Lord will utter His voice when He comes to save man in the last days. And so, to know whether the Lord Jesus has returned, you must first ask yourself whether you can hear the voice of God. The voice of God refers to the Word of God. So, we only need to hear more of Almighty God's words and look at whether or not these words are the truth and if they truly are the voice of God, then we will know whether or not the Lord Jesus really has returned. Yes. Uh. After hearing that sister's fellowship, it was clear what I needed to do. I understood that to find the work of God, I should listen to God's voice. But although I was initially excited by what they were saying, I didn't dare accept their testimony that Almighty God is the return of the Lord Jesus. Because the news came too suddenly, it was quite unexpected, and I wasn't ready to hear it. But immediately, I remembered how the Pharisees waited for the Messiah to appear. Yet when the Lord Jesus came to do His work, they did not recognize Him as the Son of God. And therefore they resisted God, and in the end were seriously punished by God. I have warned myself many times that when the Lord Jesus returned, I must not resist him like the Pharisees did. I must see him and accept him. When the Lord Jesus was born, the prophets Simeon and Anna immediately recognized the Lord Jesus as the prophesied Messiah. They were pious people who served God and looked forward to the coming of the Redeemer. And because of their devotion, they saw the Lord in their lifetimes. I have always admired them and hoped that when the Lord Jesus returned, like them, I would know the Lord Jesus when I saw him. Oh, that would be so incredibly wonderful. The scroll opened by the Lamb are words spoken personally by God. Right. It's crucial to our path in life and our salvation, assuming you want to be saved. Yeah. Read it carefully. If you have any questions, call us anytime you like. All right. Once I had the book, I began to eagerly read God's every word. True faith in God means experiencing the words and work of God based on a belief that God holds sovereignty over all things. So you shall be freed of your corrupt disposition shall fulfill the desire of God and shall come to know God. Only through such a journey can you be said to believe in God. I said amen to those words. I realized that in the past, my faith was satisfied merely by obtaining the grace of the Lord Jesus' redemption and that I didn't understand the true meaning of belief in God. 
But those words made me instantly understand. They were short, simple words that clearly explained the true meaning of belief in God, and they were very profound. Only God could speak such words, and those words became my motivation to believe in God. After I read more of God's words that exposed man's sinful corruption in an honest way, I felt even more certain that these were God's words and that this was the voice of God. Only God can thoroughly dissect our corruption and see all of our sins, and only God can see into the depths of our hearts. As the Bible says in Hebrews 4, 12, For the word of God is quick, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. After reading Almighty God's Word, many Bible verses that I hadn't understood before now made perfect sense to me. My life felt as if it had been watered by a sweet rain after a long drought, because the words of God nourished me, and the fellowship about God's word with my brothers and sisters supplied me. The more I examined, the more I was convinced Almighty God is the return of the Lord Jesus. The Church of Almighty God has the work and guidance of the Holy Spirit. It's exactly what I was looking for, it is a true church. At the Church of Almighty God, I enjoyed and experienced the work of the Holy Spirit and the words expressed by God Himself. I don't think it's possible for me to be any happier. I personally experienced words spoken by the Lord Jesus. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Those who do not follow the present work of the Holy Spirit have not entered into the work of God's words. And no matter how much they work, or how great their suffering, or how much they run about, none of it means anything to God. And He will not commend them. Today, all those who follow the present words of God are in the stream of the Holy Spirit. Those who are strangers to the words of God today are outside of the stream of the Holy Spirit. And such people are not commended by God. Following the work of the Holy Spirit means understanding the will of God today being able to act in accordance with the present requirements of God, being able to obey and follow the God of today, and entering in accordance with the newest utterances of God. Only this is someone who follows the work of the Holy Spirit and is in the stream of the Holy Spirit. Not so for the people who do not accept the new work. They are outside the stream of the Holy Spirit, and the discipline and reproach of the Holy Spirit do not apply to them. All day, these people live within the flesh. They live within their minds, and all that they do is according to the doctrine produced by the analysis and research of their own brains. 
It is not the requirements of the Holy Spirit's new work. Much less is it cooperation with God. Those who do not accept the new work of God are bereft of the presence of God, and moreover, devoid of the blessings and protection of God. Most of their words and actions hold to the past requirements of the Holy Spirit's work. They are doctrine, not truth. Such doctrine and regulation are sufficient to prove that the only thing that brings them together is religion. They are not the chosen ones or the objects of God's work. The assembly of all those among them can only be called a grand congress of religion and cannot be called a church. This is an unalterable fact. Those words are the truth. Yeah. Now that I've heard them out loud, I understand them better. <sighs> My original church, as well as the other sects I visited, aren't keeping up with the steps of God's new work. The Holy Spirit has left those churches, and now they are just places of religion, somewhere for people to gather. Yeah. But they are no longer God's churches. The whole reason my church joined the World Council of Churches and sought to unify with worshipers of evil spirits and false gods was because they thought it could save them. The church I joined later considered speaking in tongues as proof that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and had gained salvation. Mm. But these kinds of actions were completely made up by man. They don't come from God. By leading their churches this way, pastors depart from the Lord's teaching and end up going against the Lord's will, whether they mean to or not. God doesn't like that kind of church at all. God forsakes such churches. <sighs> That's why I received no guidance from God when I worshiped there. And that's why my heart felt empty and why my spirit felt weak. I had no new light. Yeah, that's right. The religious world has lost the Holy Spirit's work and is desolate. And the biggest reason is that its leaders don't follow the Lord's word or obey the Lord's commandments. They resist God's will. They've strayed from the Lord's way and so have been abandoned by the Lord. It's just like in the age of law, when the Jewish leaders did not obey Jehovah God's law and didn't love and revere God, they also went against God's will. They only followed their human traditions and discarded God's commandments and completely departed from God's way. Hmm. And so, the temple became nothing more than a desolate nest of thieves. Yes. That's right. Today, the pastors of the religious world only preach biblical knowledge and theological doctrines. They are obsessed with religious rituals, yet they have never led others in the practice or experience of the Lord's word. Hmm. And they never obey the Lord's words and commandments. Instead, they only follow the traditions and doctrines of man. They have departed from the way of the Lord. And now, God has rejected and cursed them. Yeah. These are the main reasons the religious world has lost the work of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus said, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. This is happening for a couple other reasons too. God has started new work here on earth and the main focus of God's work has shifted. The Lord Jesus has returned and on the basis of the work of redemption, he also does the work of judgment, starting with God's house. He ushers in the age of kingdom and concludes the age of grace. Amen. Now, the main focus of the Holy Spirit's work has shifted to God's work of judgment in the last yeah. days. And so, those who accept God's new work will have their thirst quenched by the water of life that flows from the throne, and they will receive the Holy Spirit's work. 
Yes, but those who stop in religion without moving on and refuse to accept the work of Almighty God will lose the work of the Holy Spirit and be lost in darkness. It's just like in the late stage of the Age of Law, when the Lord Jesus began the work of redemption outside the temple that ushered in the Age of Grace. At that time, God's work had already shifted. It was no longer in the temple, and so the temple became completely and truly desolate. Yes, that makes sense. How about some more of God's word? Sound good? All, All right. right. God will accomplish this fact. He will make all people throughout the universe come before Him and worship the God on earth. And His work in other places will cease. And people will be forced to seek the true way. It will be like Joseph. Everyone came to him for food and bowed down to him, for he had things to eat. In order to avoid famine, people will be forced to seek the true way. The entire religious community is suffering severe famine, and only the God of today is the wellspring of living water. Possessed of the ever-flowing wellspring, provided for the enjoyment of man, and people will come and depend on him. All of God's work in the entire universe has focused on this group of people. He has devoted all his efforts to you and sacrificed all for you. He has reclaimed and given to you all the work of the Spirit throughout the universe. That is why I say, you are the fortunate. Moreover, he has shifted his glory from Israel, his chosen people, to you, in order to make the purpose of his plan fully manifest through you group of people. Therefore, you are those who will receive the inheritance of God, and even more, the heirs of God's glory. I regard the universe in its entirety and see that it is an opportune time for my work. So I hurry back and forth, doing my new work upon man. I shall work upon the entire universe, and I shall perform great work revealing all my glory and all my deeds to man in the last days. I shall show my glorious countenance in its fullness to those who have waited many years for me, to those who have longed for me to come upon a white cloud, to Israel that has longed for me to appear once again, and to all mankind who persecute me so that all will know that I have long ago taken away my glory and brought it to the east, so that it is no longer in Judea. For the last days have already come. After hearing God's words and the fellowship of my sisters, I understood that the desolation of the religious world is because of the arrogance of religious leaders. They do not obey the Lord's commandments and deviate from His way. But also, it's because God's work has shifted. God already has new work, but they refuse to accept it and instead arbitrarily judge, resist, and condemn. How could the Holy Spirit work within people like that? When I reflect back on my spiritual journey, I am reminded of the words of Jehovah God. Behold, the days come that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Jehovah. Now I understand. I had visited so many different churches, but I never found any provision to my life. 
Yet when I heard the words of Almighty God, it was immediately clear in my heart. My spirit had been rejuvenated. I was full of life again. This was all because God has started new work and expressed new words to guide us. He has brought man truth, the way, and life. I'm grateful to have found Almighty God. Now we can understand what God is doing. God's work has made the religious world desolate, which actually was part of his plan all along. Yeah. It shows just how wise and almighty God is. You're right. The hunger that took place in religious world makes those who truly believe in God leave religion and search for the footsteps of God's work. They truly love the truth and seek the words that the Holy Spirit speaks to the churches. They search for the church with the Holy Spirit's work and seek the appearance of God's work. Yes. yes. This is God's good intention. All those who hear the voice of God and accept and obey Almighty God's work of judgment in the last days are the wise virgins. Amen. And will be raised up before God's throne. Amen. Amen. It's only these people that will be allowed to eat at the Feast of the Lamb and be nourished with the water of life that flows from the throne. Oh. Their original confidence and love will return. That's right. Yeah. So, they will be able to eat and drink of God's word practice God's Word, and experience God's Word. Okay. They will be those who understand the truth and gain the reality of the truth. Amen. Oh. When people know the truth and truly understand God, they can revere God and obey His words. Yeah. And thereby obtain a new life from God. Amen. Amen. It's just as God says, all of God's work in the entire universe has focused on this group of people. Amen. God wants to bring all those in religion who truly believe in God and those who love the truth before Him. He wants to make them after His own heart and truly gain them as His followers. Yeah. Meanwhile, the religious organizations and people who don't accept Almighty God's work will lose the work of the Holy Spirit they will all be rejected and eliminated by God and eventually destroyed. Amen. That way, from the church, all the wheat is separated, separated from the tares. The good servants are separated from the evil and the true believers from the false. All of this is proof of God's wisdom and almightiness. Amen. Amen. Through the Sisters Fellowship, I was able to understand God's work and God's heart. I was finally able to feel the reality of God's love. God didn't abandon me. God allowed me to meet the Lord Jesus in my lifetime. The voice of God was nourishment for my thirsty spirit. Almighty God says, the way of life is not something that can be possessed by just anyone, nor is it easily obtainable by all. That is, because life can only come from God, which is to say, only God himself possesses the substance of life. There is no way of life without God himself. And so, only God is the source of life and the ever-flowing wellspring of living water of life. From when he created the world, God has done much work involving the vitality of life, has done much work that brings life to man, and has paid a great price so that man might gain life. For God himself is eternal life, and God himself is the way by which man is resurrected. Almighty God's words are the way to eternal life, and they flow like a bottomless spring, giving us an endless supply of life. Just as the Lord Jesus prophesied, however, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, 
but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The work of God in the last days has fulfilled the prophecy of the Lord Jesus. Almighty God has revealed all the mysteries of God's 6,000-year management plan to us and freely granted us the way to eternal life. Almighty God has brought us face to face with God's personal supply and his wise shepherding. We are granted the water of life that flows from the throne and we gain the purification and perfection of God's word. I am not confused or hesitant anymore because I have already found the footsteps of God. Now, I receive personal guidance, nourishment, and shepherding, courtesy of the work of Almighty God. My heart feels safe and at peace. I feel an indescribable sense of joy. I sincerely offer my thanks and praise to Almighty God. In glory, I will forever worship the noble and righteous Almighty God. All glory be to God.